Mr. President, today our country faces a threat to the internet as we know it. The Obama administration intends to give away control of the internet to an international body akin to the United Nations. I rise today to discuss the significant irreparable damage this proposed internet giveaway could wreak not only on our nation, but on free speech across the world. The internet empowers those with nothing but hope and a dream to be able to achieve those ambitions. But right now, the Obama administration's proposal to give away control of the internet poses a significant threat to our freedom, and it's one that many Americans don't know about. It is scheduled to go into effect on September 30th, 2016. Now, what does it mean to give away control of the internet? From the very first days of the internet, when it was developed here in America, the United States government has maintained its core functions to ensure equal access for everyone with no censorship. The government role isn't to monitor what we say, it isn't to censor what we say, it is simply to ensure that it works. That when you type in a website, it actually goes to that website and not somewhere else. And yet that can change. The Obama administration is instead pushing through a radical proposal to take control of internet domain names and give it to an international organization, ICANN, that includes 162 foreign countries. And if that proposal goes through, it will empower countries like Russia, like China, like Iran, to be able to censor speech on the internet. Your speech. Countries like Russia and China and Iran are not our friends. And their interests are not our interests. Imagine searching the internet, and instead of seeing your standard search results, you see a disclaimer that the information you were searching for is censored. It is not consistent with the standards of this new international body. It does not meet their approval. Now, if you're in China, that situation could well come with the threat of arrest for daring to merely search for such a thing that didn't meet the approval of the censors. Thankfully, that doesn't happen in America. But giving control of the internet to an international body with Russia and China and Iran having power over it could lead to precisely that threat. Mr. President, if China is the enemy of the internet, do we want the enemy of the internet having power over what you're allowed to say, what you're allowed to search for, what you're allowed to read off? online? Do we want China and Russia and Iran having the power to determine if a website is unacceptable? It's taken down. I would note that once this transition happens, there are serious indications that ICANN intends to seek to flee United States jurisdiction and to flee United States laws. Indeed, earlier this summer, ICANN held a global conference in Finland in which jurisdiction shopping was part of their agenda, trying to figure out what jurisdiction should we base control of the Internet out of across the globe. A representative of Iran is already on record stating, quote, we should not take it for granted that jurisdiction is already agreed to be totally based on U.S. law. Our enemies are not hiding what they intend to do. Not only is there a concern of censorship and foreign jurisdictions stripping U.S. law from authority over the Internet, there are also real national security concerns. Congress has received no assurances from the Obama administration that the U.S. government will continue to have exclu exclusive ownership and control of the .gov and .mil top-level domains in perpetuity which are vital to our national security. The Department of Defense, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, all use the dot mil top level domain. The White House, the CIA, the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, all use dot gov. The only assurance ICANN has provided the federal government regarding dot gov and dot mil is that ICANN will notify the government 
in the future if it decides to give .gov or .mil to another entity. So if someone is going to the IRS, or what you think is the IRS, and you're con comforted that it's on a .gov website so that you know it must be safe, you may instead find yourself victims of a foreign scam, a phishing scam, some other means of fraud with no basic protections. Congress should not sit by and let this happen. Congress must not sit by and let censorship happen. Now, some defenders of the Obama proposal say, this is not about censorship. It's about handing control to a, quote, multi-stakeholder unit. They would never dream of censoring content on the internet. Well, recently, leading technology companies in the United States, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Microsoft, reached an agreement with the European Union to remove, quote, hate speech from their online platforms within 24 hours. Giant U.S. corporations signing on with the government to say, we are going to help you censor speech that is deemed unacceptable. And by the way, the definition of, quote, hate speech we have seen can be very, very malleable depending upon what norms are trying to be enforced. For example, the Human Rights Campaign, which is active within ICANN, has featured the Family Research Institute, the National Organization for Marriage, the American Center for Law and Justice, and other conservatives and religious groups in a report entitled The Export of Hate. We are facing the real possibility of an international body having the ability to censor political speech if it is contrary to the norms they intend to enforce. In their view, it is hate to express a view different from whatever the prevailing orthodoxy is being enforced. Now, it's one thing dealing with government organizations that try to stifle speech. That is profoundly inconsistent with who we are as Americans. But to hand over control of the Internet, to potentially muzzle everybody on the Internet, is to ensure that what you say is only consistent with whatever is approved by the powers that be. That, and that ought to frighten everyone.